Okay, we'll keep going with some of these uh, phrases. And we'll go back and wrap up our other chapter that we've been working on. So uh, just being thankful and grateful, just seeing how Ganesh Chish works. Ganesh Chish also works as a verb. Because I've heard people in Tesson that they'll say, Ganesh Chish Ich Satine. I was like, oh, that's a verb then. Because it makes that other one go to the, like that. I mean, it's, it seems to be working like a verb anyways. And so to be thankful for things, this is the other thing like the yis and the jiyis and the kage and the kach. Eventually we'll learn how to use all of those things. Yis is one of the ones that we start with and it's sort of like it's a gift for that person. It's, it's going to be given to somebody. That's kind of how it works. Although you'll say like, I'm angry for you. That means I'm mad at you, right? Yes would be how you would assign, that's how you direct that anger. If you need to do that. Uh, but to be thankful for the food, like if you're going to stand up because people brought food, you could say, I'm thankful for the food. And what we'll continue to find, I think, is that English links things together certain ways, and Klinkit links things together certain ways, and sometimes they just work different. Thank you for helping me. Sorry, I went low high. Thank you for teaching me. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to you. Okay. And it's just interesting because this idach means from you. Right? So it's it's just the concepts are just always fun to look at um, and to just sort of think about sometimes. Okay. Uh, this is something I heard Navajo people saying. I was down there, and there's a little boy, and his grandma says, Haku. And I was like, oh, We say Haku. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting back together. <laughs> Although today someone said, Well, I heard, you know, they said, someone who's Navajo, they said they migrated from the north and they were never supposed to go back to the north. I was like, Well, I was down in Navajo country, and somebody told me, and we migrated from the south. And we were never supposed to come back. And I remember it because their son fell in love with the Qunana uh, Shawati. And they were like, well, that's the end of the world, I guess. You know? <laughs> For one person, Haku. 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 More than one person, Hatia. 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 Come here, cutie. A cook. A cook. A cook. Or a cook. Raven uses this one when he wants something. Use it as you wish. If you you have to be inside, if you are already inside, and somebody wants to come in, or they knock on the door, say neshka. Neshka. It's important to remember that means come inside, not go inside because we're both outside. It'll be a little different. You have to already be inside to use that one. Y'all come inside. Okay. 
Uh, I am learning Klinkit. Klingit stuchas tu. Klingit stuchas tu. You see how these, like, all of these things tend to kind of run together. Stuchas tu. And then to sort of, so Klingit is the thing, but it could be anything. It, it better be Klingit, but it could be. <laughs> Shtu means inside of the self, right? Chushtu, right? Because well, my uncle taught me another one. It's chushtu idishi, which is uh, how about let's say go touch inside yourself. So shtu inside of the self, chashtu to study, uh, to teach. I'm teaching it inside of myself, or I'm teaching it to myself is kind of what you're saying. And this, I think it's an important sort of concept because like we do a lot of work here, but however, more, however much work we do here, you got to do about twice as much work out there. And if you do that, you're going to get it. But if you don't do that, it's going to, it's the roads much longer. Right. And then we talked about this too. Finding time to listen to Klinkin, finding ways to start producing the language, studying the grammar of it, and then just building on your lists. I think those are the four big things that you need to do. Uh, I know it. I know it. Sorry. That should say it. That should say it. Kwasaku. Kwasaku. So between these two, Khosaku and Khosaku, what is different between them? I am a classifier. Classifier goes from si to sa. Because si means it has happened. Sa means it hasn't happened. Right? What else? The length of the stem. Yeah, so it goes from long to short. Right? So we shouldn't be saying You're going to get that saku, right? And these are just some things to start noticing now because, you know, when you say, I know, I don't know. I get it, I don't get it. I'm going, I'm not going. But for Tlingit, the whole verb is going to go through a few different shifts. We should expect the classifier to shift. We should expect the, the stem to shift. Uh, it won't be that way all the time, but it's usually going to be that way. So here's another example. I understand. Achdaya kushusage. Achdaya kushusage. Achdaya kushusage. Okay. Okay. So this is, and so knowing and understanding are different. I got bawled out one time because an elder was talking to me, and I said, and he said, you don't know or you don't understand. I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> I didn't understand what he was saying to me. And he says, you need to learn to say, what if I'm saying, who's your mom? You're like, I don't know. Right? Some people don't know. So they, could be asked, they could be saying all kinds of things, right? So it's good to learn both of these because what you're communicating is I don't understand. And once you say that, then the speaker will know to either slow it down, try it again, try it a different way. Maybe they'll write it down in English. Maybe they'll tell you. Um, and then achdaya kushusage is good too. And what's the da? Around. So like, it's sort of like, kushusage is sort of like intelligence, sort of understanding, comprehension. So sort of like comprehension is around me. Comprehension isn't around me. So these two pre-verbs, they have to be with 
Those yeah, cause, yeah, because the ach da and the e da and the do that that would be like do da, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> do da? <I> no, that. <laughs> <laughs> that part has to be there, and so you you are going to find some verbs where that's going to show you where it conjugates as well, right? Because I'll say tesh do da ya he or she doesn't understand. Right, if we're sitting there talking and the elders kind of keeps asking the question, I might say, But yeah, there, there's a few of them that are like that, where it's the ach i or ach da. Uh, ach da is around me, right? It could also mean my body, uh, but it's, usually, it's often going to be around me or about me. Okay, so being able to just sort of talk, say it. Yeyanaka. 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 Say it again. Suyeyanaka. 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 Oh, the elders heard that from us a lot. Suyeyanaka. Suyeyanaka. Shachdaya pushes game. I forgot. A cut hut say will cock. A cut hut say will cock. A cut hut say will cock. And so these, these ones have the exclamation point because they're commands. That's a command form, which is why you're getting the na in there, right? Not the na, it's not going to be there for every command. But that's a na conjugation verb, and that's why it's going to pop up. No, this is it's a yeah, it's a good one, and it's funny because it's one that people forget. Like I forget, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> so the first part is a cut, a cut, a cut, and it means on it. Okay, on it. And then the second part is khat. 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 That's me. Say wa khaq. Say wa khaq. Say I think it means like the voice died out. Like the literal definition. Like on it, the voice died out. Me. It, it's, it's a, it's, Somewhere you start untangling it and starts, you're like, well, there's some complicated things going on there. A cut hut say wuk up. A cut hut say wuk up. A cut hut say wuk up. And just remembering this root. And then I could say, uh, what do you think would happen if I change this oops, to a letter I? I. You forgot it. I forgot you. Oh, I forgot oh. you. Oh. Right? So how, as I know you guys are how would I say you forgot me? Cut is cut is say work up. So this is what we start learning objects and subjects, and we say, okay, generally, most of the time, the subject does the verb, the object it happens to them. But there are certain verbs in Clinket where it's actually the odd, because you're forgetting, right? So you're the one who forgot. And then you have this thing we call an indirect object. And sometimes it's going to be ach da, ach kat, ach i. And this is just how it's going to work. It's another little twist on the, on the grammar tree of Clinket. Uh, so again, so there's the a, uh, And then we'll change this back. A cut hat say wuk up. And then tell me, tell me the information. 
tell me the news. So this one is usually news or information. There's another way to say story. It's similar, but we're not gonna, we won't do that one now. Uh, but this is particular, this isn't just say it, this is tell me, right? So like, if, you know, wasa wuti we wushkanach wutu da'ati, how was the meeting? Kashushka. An kananik, right? Tell me all that. And so and so said, and that, right? Well, all. Khan kananik. Khan kananik. Khan Kananik. Khan Kananik. Tell me again. Could you say Lidikat Khan Kananik? Stikat at. Because everything. Yeah, Stikat usually needs a noun to come right after. Right? Or it needs some, it usually needs a noun. So Stikat at would be everything. Stikat at Khan Kananik. Tell me the gossip from town. And so, yeah, so what you see down here is, uh, we'll do this one, then I'll tell you what's going on with the Khan. So this Achin is the exact same thing as Khan. What happens, this is the cannot and can't discussion. A lot of really fluent speakers will say Khan. A lot of folks who are learning will say Achin. They are the same thing, right? And so you're gonna see this with a few of them. Uh, and same with Ach, you've probably heard this one. Achit idishe. Achit idishe. I need your help. Right? Help me. But you could say, Same thing. Achit can be Right? Is it common? It is. But I, I, I find it more with the old, the old people. Chat, especially, you don't hear that one too much. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a group of them, I actually have, I think I had them in another, in that one, not in that one. I guess I had it open earlier. I find this other one that I had. So here they are. So ach i, to me, could become khan or khat. Ha in would can become han. That one is probably less common. Uh, do in can become doon, but I've never heard that. Ha in can become kun, and I do hear that one quite a bit. That's why you say ku atchatu, because it's ka i teaching people. The other one that you'll hear quite a bit is a in which is with it, and you'll hear that as on. So if you hear on right before a verb, and you don't think it's land, it's probably with it. So you could say, He hit him or her on the head with a cup. Right, so that's what the on part is doing. That's what the khan part is doing. Okay, so just to say that's how it is, that's it. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is that how it is? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That is correct. A yeah, oh, yeah, oh, Is that correct? A yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, That's incorrect. Kesha, yeah, that's the only one with a verb. What do you think the positive form of uti is? Yati. Yati. Wasa yati. Kesh uti means it's not that way. It's not being that way. Okay.
If you want to know how to say it, I'll tell you how to say it. Some of these are just kind of the polite way. Gande ach tu wati. Gande ach tu wati. Gande ach tu wati. I want to go to the bathroom. And people don't say this one, but some of the old people, we've heard them. Now, these are ones that will probably get a giggle. Uh, so be careful. But in the right context, you can, you can have fun. Ach eat suk uwaha. Ach eat suk uwaha. Need to pee has suddenly arrived, right? And it's like, I was fine a minute ago. <laughs> and then uh, the really dramatic one. Ach kanach ye yeti ach shuku. Ach kanach ye yeti ach shuku. Like some context, right? Like, say, like, you know, someone keeps talking to you and you're like, no, I have to go. <laughs> and then, ach eat shit u waha. Ach eat shit u waha. <laughs> Again, they're pretty direct ways to say it, but the closer you are with people, sometimes you're direct. It occurs to me that a lot of these things are the exact same things you say to a, an older person. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and you need to be clear. Yeah. Right? You know, it's like, okay, what do we need to do, or what did you do so we can fix it? When we start raising kids and clink it to like kids, you're like, right? <laughs> I shook again. Did you pee? Yeah. Because they're going to go to bed and you don't want to pee pee bed. And let's rest. Katush saw. Katush saw. Katush saw. Let's take a walk. Atnach tu art. Atnach tu art. Atnach tu art. Atnach tu art. Drive around. Let's go cruising. At nach to kuch. I don't know why At to kuch. At nach to kuch. At nach to kuch. At nach to kuch. There it is there too. And so these ones, you can also use this exact same verb and change at to something day. And let's go like, Hundaka hitti de nach to kuch. Let's go to the store. That was long. Let's go to the movies, right? So, kid, let's go. Let's go do that. Let's go do this thing. Let's eat. And that's not like let's eat that. That's just like hey, let's go. Let's eat. Let's eat anything, right? <laughs> Let's study. And then let's play. Ashkanach to yet. Ashkanach to yet. yet. So uh, this verb root means to like read or study or count or teach. This verb root means to eat. This verb root means to go by boat or car. This verb root means for plural, more than one person, to walk. What do you think this one means? Yet. What? Not playing. Is it related to yeti? Yes. Child. Oh. It means child. Like... Let's pretend to be kids. That's kind of what you're saying. And it's a really neat verb root because this is one that will always be Y high tone A T. It can't go long, can't go low. It will always be yet. And it's just a fun one. You know, so you see a kid is a verb. And it changed from at to ash. Instead of at, to at, now oh at. yeah, so at is a place. Oh, okay. a lot of the playing ones are going to have ush in front of them. Ashkadutaja, 
let's go swim around and play in the water. Ash, ash, kanach tuchaita. Let's go play basketball. Right, the ush is going to be in front of it. It's just this kind of frozen thing. It has to do with playing. There's a whole bunch of verbs where you could just, you could play. And so we we're trying to figure out how to say like play tag. And so it would be like play, you know, touching people or something. Uh, and so that ush is built in there. Uh, there is a pronoun ush and that's a different thing. This is just specifically referring to playing. At, at nachtu at means that's a, a place because we're going to go do this in a place. Yeah. And so this high tone, this one here usually means like just around, right? So like, um, where were you? I was walking around. Oh. That's the teenager, right? The clinky teenager. <laughs> Prepare for all of this. Okay. Any other questions? So yet is not play. No. Yet is child. The verb itself, usually you're going to have ush, you're going to have ka, you're going to have a, a lot of times a DL classifier, then you're going to get something on there. But this is the type of playing that this is talking about is really running around. Sometimes Some kind of physical get up, run around type of play. What's that? The third one the, uh, is that. It, it doesn't mean the same thing as the other. No, so this one is different. Yes, very good eye. So this one is a directional thing. This one is an object. It just means something, right? Because uh, if there was some food right there, and you say, let's eat that, you would say, katucha. Or when you say, at katucha, let's eat something, right? And so some, this at will pop in there sometimes, and it'll just sometimes change it a little bit. So for example, you could say, um, I'm cooking it. Or you could just say, I'm cooking. So sometimes what the at does, it just says, focus on the action, not on what you're doing it to, right? And we'll see a few examples uh, next week when we wrap up the beginning Clinket workbook. Uh, that's the goal, is to try and get through it. Because we better finish this chapter. On. 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 Uksa we khun. Tesh. Juno dot. Isikuke. Where do they have these guys? These fur seals? What's that? Pribiloffs. Pribiloffs? Yeah, what? They must have. They, they used to. They must have been around Sitka or north of Sitka because in the Kach Achguk story, that's what they're hunting. That's what the Russians were here for. Yeah, in Yahucha. Well, they mostly um, otters. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yahucha. Yeah. Right. But the American seal trade was really big in the A wall screen? Clean, 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 leggings, uskate, uskate, uskate. So uskate is a compound with three words built into it. What do you think they are? Who's the legs? Ka, on, at, thing. So the at is all over the place. It can alter a verb, and we see it built into nouns. A lot of times it'll appear as eight. If you have some clinket word that has more than one syllable and it ends with eight, it might be a compound, because when you have ka, at, when you, come, when you put those together, they become kate. This is just something that happens. Sha, ye, at, thing under the head, Shayet, right? And so this is just patterns. Sa'at, thing on this part of the body. Sa'at. That's how clinket compounds work. This is a very common thing. It's, a, it's an unusual thing, I think, to go from the letter A to E-I. But this is, this is why um, 
it goes that other direction too, which is kind of interesting. Cheo, which is sand, will become chao if it gets compounded. That's why you say duck, cha, we, di. There's a bunch of things going on in there. Dock, inland. Cheo, sand. Ut, thing. Possessive marker. Duck, cha, we, di. And that, that's just how, but you start to see these patterns. They start to reveal themselves when you look at, there, there's a bunch of shifts and things that go on. But when you start to see it, it's like, okay, that's predictable. I can see it. There's that eight thing. So leggings, they're kind of fun. Thing on the leg. That's really what it means. Shadakuch. 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 I think that's related because kuch is the name for the, the flower thing on top of yana eight. And then on yana eight, when it's flowering, underneath it, there's this kind of bulby part. Mm-hmm. It's called kuch yiyagu. Kuch mm-hmm. under yiyagu. Yeah. Rekhan. Ah. Ah, 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 Cake. 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 So now to ask, what do you need? Dot a tea nachsa a Dot a tea nachsa a So looking at the parts in here, da, we know uh, there's a different one, which is around or about or a body. This is a different da. This is the what da. It likes to pair with sa all the time. If what's coming after it starts with a vowel, it will usually switch to dot. It's just something that happens. So you could say da sa, but here you'd say dot et nach sa. And, and so there are things that can go in between the da and the sa, right? So the next thing we look at is itinach, which is kind of a fun concept. So there's this word in Shingit, which we call a relational noun, which means it has to belong to something. And the word is it. Have you heard that before? It. Yeah, so it means like something that's left behind or the remnant the ruins, you know, what's like, so you say because there was a foot there and now there's a, a remains of that foot, a footprint. It's in ashes too, the remains of a fire. Yeah, so like, let's say somebody, we're out on a campsite or whatever, we come across a campsite, somebody built a fire and it has charred the ground, gun eat because gun is like, like a campfire. And then eat it, like it's what's left over. If I sat here and ate all my food at this table and I walked away as a bunch of crumbs, atcha eat it. And there's lots of, you're going to see this thing come up, this eat it. There's a place where sit eat it, glacier remains bay. That's the name for glacier bay. It's the place where the, and then there's different ways to translate that too. Where the glacier used to be. Ha i te Our descendants. The ones, the people in our remains. It's a very cool concept in Shinge. You'll see it pop up in different places in these sort of compound nouns. Uh, if uh, I wasn't coming to the class, and I needed a substitute, that person might stand here and say, 
Chonei Tichahan. I'm standing in the place where Chonei was. Right? And so sometimes it has these big metaphorical uses. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward. I was sitting there eating a bag. I was eating Cheetos. And I took a picture of my fingers. And I said, Cheeto eat it. <laughs> oh, that's weird, like orange, super bright orange powder. So you combine eat with nach. And nach is a suffix that means through or along. Through the remains. And that's just kind of how it works. And then you have iyati, which is for you are being. Right? And then there's a lot of different ways that yati can be used. This for uh, what we'll look at uh, probably next week is how we could take a verb and create a, a, a whole bunch of verbs out of that one sort of pattern, like yati to be a color, to be like something, to be li living somewhere, to be a certain way. Uh, you'll, you'll, there's a whole bunch of them. But in this case, data tinech sa'iyati. It means, it translates to, what do you need? This is also something, you know, I was, I was recording these two elderly ladies, and one was recently a widow, and she said, kunachawe. We're always needing them, our loved ones. You know, and just to listen to, to widows talk about their, their recently departed spouses is very emotional. And it also reveals a lot about the language and how the language works to so talk about stuff like that. But it, wanting is different than needing. And so now we'll say, Heen etina chatyati. Right? And so they can also put a pronoun in there, right? I need you, right? And this is how we write the other countries. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the end of the chapter. Any questions on that stuff? Having, wanting, needing, right? Okay. So now we're going to get into kinship, uh, talking about re relatives and stuff like that. And the, we're going to use the Schlingit kinship system. We're going to understand how it works. There's a fun like flow chart in the back of this. So if you find anybody, and you should be able to find out how you're related to them. Mm. And kinship is fun because it's also very, it's flexible. It's flexible because it's not all, one is, there's no words for cousin. So you just forget about all that stuff because we're going to use different words than that. There's uh, things that, that are used today that maybe were a little bit different at another time. Khuni, that was usually people of your same moiety. But now it's just used for, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's changed a little bit probably. And now it can be used for anybody. Connie is really what you should be calling someone. If they're, whether they're, if they're your friend and you don't have a more direct relationship than that, Connie, if I'm a yesh and they're a pooch or chak nachsati, Connie is probably better than khuni. Right? Uh, and then we're going to, we'll also learn that kinship terms can change, right? Yeah, <laughs> Iranian <laughs> 
Yeah, it dark car, the clue, the coat, the toe, a good clue, the husk of the tea, or a hiati. Ha. Cut car chook and shah. Duck a coat, a duck clue, the sigh, I wear a get us oo a sa. Cuts no oo. Yeah, we play the hina, ya has the car who a ya has the knock who good. Achit has held the tongue. I eat it, did she? Ha eat it, did she? Ha at oo, a ya sheet cock. At the tina, ha yeti, conachoe and goon, a ya. Ha de a gecker key the clean. Ah, ah, ye eat the cockodish. Yeah, we has to eat it away. Would she? One and is away where who eat a ya, ya did the he. Awe, duck ah, duck away the sigh, awe a heto has over sa, ye we are in a cowanik scate. Ya shook or aye, cash keys. Ye we one canines we keep ha, a tassian a queen. Ye away we shugu ah, what is a teen? A day away. Ya has na gweni ye, we keed. Chua ya we ka a we a shkiz. A cha we ka shkiz a ya. Ya chakuta a we a khsayi, she wat ke. Ye we a cha we, has khak wa wus, ya a khlil ko has. Gwa sha khyeti a ya du yad ka kisa, we ka shkiz. Ye awa do do hundach ayah or good. Unya gees away ya wahi, a car do jeet out the tongue. Scate, who a gush. Gushok chin cart away to Katago. Ye awa no ach jeet out the tongue. Ha, was away scate? Hokoa. Ha, ye gay ish. Ach ish. Ya ach ish aya ach naku gudi. Ya shat kiyats guh khatsa tiyi dach. Ya jas ach khustiyi ka nakha ya tukakawe ach tiwas gudnuch. Ach ish aya khatsa tiyi datawe ach ish khatsa tiyi. Gan chish sik. Gan chish sik. Yuk echa. Yuk echa. So kinship can change, right? So... What'd you guys catch of that story? Your daughter. My daughter, right? Say yes. Jesse Johnny's name? Yeah, well, Jesse Johnny was my teacher. Uh, she taught me a lot of things. When my firstborn was born, my oldest daughter, uh, we went to see her. And she was saying, uh, does, she, does she have a name? Does she have a clinket name? I said, well, I just call her Kasechja but she hasn't gotten a name yet. And she says, what clan is she? I said, well, the Dakhtawadi want to give her a name. Uh, her mother is Iranian and Inupiat. And she says, oh, oh, she says, well, I have these two Dakhtawadi names that were given to me because in Angoon, uh, a, a big person died and they asked me to help by bringing them their Adu from Sitka. And I, I helped them. At that Kuik, they gave me these two names, and I want her to I want her to have that one of these names. She said it's Kashkes, because when there's a pod of killer whales, sometimes the one in the front, when it's swimming and you watch it, it looks like a person sewing. Mm. And then the other name is uh, Shwatke, good woman. And so I, I said, okay. I said thank you. And uh, they did. It happened at a Kuik, but even before that Kuik happened, after we had this conversation. In thing it, and then I left, and then several days later she called me, and I was like, "Oh hey!" And she says, "Hi, Dad." And so it just it just changed like that. And she even said to me, she said, "My dad died when I was very young. I've always wanted a dad, and now I have a dad." Mm -hmm. and it was that was a transformational moment. Like we were using these kinship terms, and just like these kin, like if people become really good friends, you know. Ach, ach, kik aya zeus, ketain aya yeji wune ha yu ketangi da. James Crippen works really hard on our language. We started to become really good friends, and 
was dropping him off at the airport, and we were both yeish nach zati, we're different clans. Because we're getting close, you know, he, he said, kun chish kik. I said, ha, kun so e kata I said, yeah, but how old are you? He was younger than me, so I was like, you're the kik. <laughs> <laughs> Go make my coffee. <laughs> because the kinship tells you your authority. It tells you who you can boss around. <laughs> who can you use these command verbs for? Because, you know, sometimes you can. A lot of times you got to be careful, right? And so these are the things that we're going to get to uh, next week in this chapter. This adusawe and talk about kinship, relationships, and then how we maintain that stuff in our mind. And how sometimes that stuff, because it's a wonderful way to greet someone. Sunny. Oh, just by jumping right to that kinship term. Okay. Good to see you. Sunny was your opposite. Yeah, Sunny is your opposite. And that's one that you can, you can tease about a little bit. It, it's just, it's really funny. Like even my kids like would walk around and I'd see like a mannequin. And I'd say to my kids, I'd say, Sunny Aqua. I would think it's so mad. <laughs> I'm doing matches. <laughs> Somebody please name the 